I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it's home to me and I walk along. Hey, hey, good looking. What you got cooking? How's about cooking something up? Gotta tip it in. Aju. Gotta tip it in. Aju. Boy, I'm loving this. Aju. Get that sandwich in. Hey guys, welcome to Manly's Kitchen. Right now we're making aju to go with our French dip panini. So we're gonna start by adding a little bit of olive oil. To give it a nice taste. I love olive oil. Or like Rachel Ray says, EVOO. -O. Alright, now we're gonna add some of that chopped onion, about a fourth of the onion that we did in our onion cooking tutorial thingy. And we're gonna let that saute for a couple. And then it will get nice and brown. It'll be yummy. Okay. While that's working, we're gonna be adding some garlic. We went to the store and bought some already minced garlic. You want to get it minced because it adds more flavor the smaller the garlic is. And this is a tablespoon, a big spoon, not, not a small spoon, no, big spoon. Okay, so we're just going to add around, that's a lot of garlic. Let's just do half a tablespoon of garlic. And that'll give this au jus a really nice taste. You can already smell it, just, it's amazing. Alright, now we're going to add two cups of beef broth. A can, about a regular size can, is about two cups. This is what we're going to add. It's not plugged up. Ha ha ha. Sorry guys, I suck at working for openers. Alright, there we go. Okay, now, now that the onions and the garlic's already starting to caramelize, we're just gonna dump it right in there. This is going to be awesome. Now give it a little, nice little stir. Get all the garlic off the bottom of the pan. Just get it nice. Add the flavors can really mix. Now we're gonna add one and a half tablespoons of beef bouillon crystals. That's what this is. I've never used it before, so we're just gonna go for it. That's about a tablespoon. And a half. Alright, just give it a nice stir. Continue to let those flavors just melt together. Alright, now we're gonna add some thyme. What you do is you take the leaves off of the stalk and just add it in there. A little thyme goes a lot of way. Just keep letting it melt. Now we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. Alright, and this is going to cook for 15 minutes and then it's going to be good to go and go great with our French dip sandwich panini thing. Cool guys! Hey y'all! Welcome back to Man Meats Kitchen. Now we're making Kyle's French dip panini. So finally, somebody's making Kyle Porter a sandwich. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Now I've got the bread. It's a regular French French bread from Publix. And we're just going to get some mayo. And yes, I use a spoon to press stuff on my sandwiches. People make fun of me for that, but look how easy that is. And it's just, it's so simple. So just spread out the mayo, get it all even and nice. 
yum. Man, that's really gross. Okay. Now, we're going to add just a couple pieces of roast beef. And it's going to give it a nice, nice, meaty flavor. And you know Kyle likes meat. If you know what I mean. Alright, now we're going to add a piece of Munster cheese. See how it has a little orange border around it? I don't know what that means or what it does, but it tastes <laughs> really good when it's all melted. Alright, and now, we're going to add our caramelized onions right here. See these? Tons of butter on them right there. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to spread it out. Doesn't that look delicious already? Yes, it does. Now we're just going to close it up, come over here, stick it on our panini press, close it down, and there you go. Give it about 5 to 10 minutes, maybe, depending on how your panini press works, and then you're good to go. Alright guys, now we're going to be enjoying our yummy French dip paninis. So what I'm going to do to plate it, is I'm just going to cut it right in half. And it smells delicious. Look at that. Isn't that just amazing? Now, I'm going to get a little bowl, and I'm going to get some au jus. A little bit more. And I'm just going to pile it up just like that. See how beautiful that is? Yes. Alright, now, how to eat this thing. Get the sandwich, dip it in. That's delicious. Oh, what do you think, Elise? This is really good. <laughs> Have fun making this, guys. Alright, hey guys, now we're making the dessert, and it's Elise's idea to do s'more panini. She created it all by herself, and it's going to be really good, so here she goes. Alright, so, all, this is really, really simple. All you have to do is get some, like, cinnamon bread, kind of jack it up, and you put it in a plate, get some chocolate stuff. It's probably better with, like real chocolate, but this is all we had, so just deal. Just get some of it out. We're going to spread it on the bread. We're going to put a little bit on the other side, too. See, she uses a spoon, too. I'm not alone in the world. <laughs> then we're gonna take two really big marshmallows, or you could have like four small ones, whatever floats your boat. We're gonna like split them and do that. Now we're gonna put it in the panini thing. And we'll wait Yum. for all of like, you know, 30 seconds and it will be done and it will be wonderful. Alright, and for that 30 seconds, I'm going to talk for a minute. I forgot to mention earlier, if you don't have a panini press, you can do it on the griddle or the frying pan like this thing, except the frying pan right there. And do it like you're making a grilled cheese and just kind of get everything melted inside. So yeah, it'll be really good. And try our recipes because they're actually delicious. So yeah, thanks guys. Now we're going to look and see what this s'more panini looks like. Ooh. Look at that. Alright, now let's get it out. How? With a knife. This one? Yeah, that knife. <laughs> Sticky knife. <laughs> Alright, it's good. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alright, now let's, let's look inside here and see what it looks like. Look at that yumminess. Oh, man. Alright, try this. It's awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>